In the previous semester, we studied how to solve systems of linear equations, and we talked about three possible methods, namely by graphing, by substitution, and elimination. So those methods that we studied for linear equations um, can also be used for nonlinear systems. So in this lesson, we're going to do those same methods but we're going to apply them to nonlinear equations. So what do we mean by nonlinear equations? Now, a system of nonlinear equations um, may consist of um, a linear equation and a quadratic equation, or it could also be a combination of two quadratic equations. So at least one of them um, is nonlinear. So what is our goal in solving nonlinear systems? Our goal is um, to figure out whether they have a solution or not. And by solution, we mean um, whether they intersect at a point like this, it has one solution, or maybe they intersect at two different points, or they don't intersect at all. So let's take a look at one example. Um, here, equation one is a quadratic. So let me write that down. Um, equation 1 is a quadratic equation. Quadratic. And the second one is linear. So if you were to graph each equation, um, this one would be a parabola facing upward, right? And at this point, you can choose um which graphing method you would like to use if you remember what i what i mentioned earlier if you can you know find the vertex and use symmetry to um find one point from each side of the vertex then you can make um, a good approximation of your graph and then the other one is a linear function going up right um you can figure out the one to step from here and then you can um, use the slope to figure out another point of the graph. So um, this is also like um, a lesson in which we can use some of our graphing tools, such as decimals or GeoGebra, whichever you are more familiar with. So let's start the first one. Y is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. So we know that this is a parabola facing upward, right? Um, the second one is y is equal to um, x minus 3. So let's maximize this one so you can see clearly. So if you zoom in and look at these two graphs, do they intersect? Okay, so let's zoom in on that intersection and see what the coordinates are. So if you look at the um, coordinates of, you know, uh, this point where the blue line and the red parabola intersect, the coordinates are negative 1, negative 4. Um, one way to quickly check is, you know, plug it in. So let's try. Um, if x is negative 1, negative 1 minus 3, yes, you get negative 4. How about here? If you square negative 1, you get 1 times 2, if you still 2, and then 2 minus 5 will be negative 3, and then negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So since this ordered pair, um, which represents the intersection of the two graphs, satisfies um, both equations in our system, then we know that it is correct, it is the solution. So going back here, um, it means that the system has one solution, which is, if I'm not, I forgot, it was negative one, negative four. So the solution is negative one, negative 4.
Now, my next question is, well, what else can be, you know, can be solved by graphing, and what other types of systems um, can you use this for? So we're going to look at more examples and see what happens. So here is another, you know, system of nonlinear equation. The first one is a quadratic. Well, the second one is an exponential. So you see that variable x is now an exponent. Okay, so what we're going to do is use graphing to approximate the solution to the system. So let's unclick these so we can hide them for now. Um, let's type in a function x squared minus 2x minus 5. It's a parabola facing up, right? With vertex, where yeah, the vertex is 1, negative 6. It has a minimum point to get the contours up. Now let's plot the graph of 2 raised to x. Okay, so 2 raised to x plus 1. So this is another curve with y intercept at 2 because that's your initial um, initial value, right? And you can see that um, the asymptote line um, is y is equal to 1 because this represents like a vertical translation. Um, the original exponential function has an initial value of 1, right? But um, the, the, um, the asymptote line um, went up 1 unit um, for this function here, 2 to the x plus 1. Okay, so how many times do they intersect each other? So there is a clear intersection here. So the approximate value there would be, let's write it down, so negative 1.703, comma 1.307. So our answers in decimals in here match each other, and they're, they're right. Well, does this intersect over here? Okay, so the purple line seems to, you know, um, go farther and farther from the green curve. So I guess there's only one intersection for for this system of nonlinear equation. So another um, application of solving nonlinear systems by graphing is when you're being asked to solve an equation where you know the left hand side um, is exponential while the other is um, quadratic. So what we can do is actually write each side of the equation as a function, so on the left hand side you have an exponential function while on the right hand side you have a quadratic function. So now this is similar to what we've been doing earlier, right? So let's unclick these two. Let's um, plot the graph of the to equations forming our system and let's see whether they intersect or not. Okay. So using that. Alright. So now there are, you know, how many possible intersections? There's two possible intersections. They intersect here, which is um, 1, 0. And another possible solution is given by this point right here with approximately um, negative 
two comma three point seven as ordered pairs. So that's um, another application of um, solving systems by graphing. So let me clear this in so we can write the results down. So the solutions of the equation um, are when x is equal to one, right? So when x is equal to one, y is equal to zero, and then the other solution is um, negative one point three when or one point twenty three when you round it up to the nearest um, hundred. So again, we've seen that solving systems by graphing could be used for a variety of combinations. Um, the last step being, you know, the most interesting part in which uh, we started with solving an equation, right? And then we wrote each side of the equation as two different functions, and then we graphed them to figure out where their intersections are.